Hello students, welcome to this another lecture of Emerging Trends in Mechanical Engineering. <coughs> and in this lecture, we will study about hyperbolic cooling towers. So, in picture, you will see the nature of cooling tower, which is also called as a natural draft cooling tower or hyperbolic cooling tower. In most of the thermal power stations, such type of nature you will find and a cement concrete structure. This is a cement concrete structure. So let us learn about, in short, how is the working or what are the parts or what are the types of such type of cooling towers. What is cooling tower? A cooling tower is a device that use transfer heat and cooling water for reuse in the process. So to cool the water and we have to use that water to reuse in the process. Cooling towers are used in process industries to cool off water from various heat transfer equipment. What is the example of heat transfer equipment? Condensate from a condenser. This is the example. There are, not, there are other devices also, but here for your understanding, simple example is mentioned. Condensate from the condenser. We know very well what is a condenser. The cold water is sent back to the process for reuse, thus emphasizing conservation of water so because of this cooling tower the conservation of the water is done conservation of water is done and that's why that is, this is a very important device in that direction so these are the some of the sketches or picture or photographs of different cooling towers used in process industries number one is this is you can see package type cooling tower so package type cooling tower field directed cooling tower these are used in process industries industrial cooling towers for power plant such natures also available and hvac cooling tower such and these are the, this is another picture now here in this we have to consider only hyperbolic cooling tower what is this hyperbolic hyperbolic cooling towers are large hyperbolic cooling towers are large thin shell reinforced concrete structure reinforced concrete structures which contribute to environmental protection and to power generation efficiency and reliability. Hyperbolic reinforced concrete cooling towers are widely used for cooling large quantities of water. To cool large quantities of water, these are used in thermal power stations, refineries, atomic power plants, steel power plants, steel plants, air conditioning and other industrial plants. So these are the application of these hyperbolic cooling towers. What are the types of cooling tower? Let us see this. There are the first type is natural draft cooling tower. It has two types. Number one is cross flow tower and counter flow tower. And second type is mechanical draft cooling tower. It is also having two types. One is called force draft and second one is called induced draft. So mechanical draft cooling tower or this is mechanical draft cooling tower and this is natural draft cooling tower. So natural draft cooling tower is also called as a hyperbolic, hyperbolic cooling tower. So let us see natural draft cooling tower. So the natural draft or hyperbolic cooling tower. Now see again, natural draft is also called as a hyperbolic cooling tower. Makes use of difference in temperature. Makes use of difference in temperature between the ambient air and the hotter air inside the tower. As hot air moves upward through the tower, because hot air rises, fresh cool air is drawn into the tower through an air inlet at the bottom. So air uh, inlet is there at the bottom and the fresh air is drawn into the tower through this air inlet. Due to the layout of the tower, no fan is required. No fan. It is natural draft. That's why no fan is required and there is a, almost no circulation of hot air that could affect the performance. These cooling towers are most only for large heat duties because large concrete structures are expensive. There are two different types of natural draft cooling towers or hyperbolic cooling towers. What are these? Number one is cross flow cooling tower. In this, air is drawn across the falling water and the fill is located outside the tower. So, fill is located. This fill is located outside the tower. Counter flow Second is counter flow tower, air is drawn up through the falling water and the fill 
field is therefore located inside the tower. So here this is a different. This field is located inside the tower. Although design depends on the specific site conditions. So you have seen these conic sections: circle, ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. Circle, ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. Here this is a conic section that is important. Hyperbola means such type of structure. That's why it is called hyperbolic cooling tower. So this structure you will find like a hyperbola. So these two figures indicates the two types of cross flow and counter flow cooling towers. Here you will see in cross flow this fill, this fill is outside the cooling, uh, outside the system. And here you will see the fill, this fill, this fill is inside this cooling tower, inside this cooling tower. Taki, uh, rest of the components are as it is. Air inlet is at the bottom. Here also the air inlet is, is at the bottom. And you will see the cold water return pipe here. Uh, and uh, here in this case you will see hot water inlet, uh, inlet pipe here. Like this some of the differences. These are the cross flow and counter flow cooling towers. So what is the basic principle here? It is used. Hot water and relatively cool ambient air enter the cooling tower. Firstly, after that heat transfer between the air stream and water stream occurs. Hot water transfers its heat to the ambient air and becomes cool. Cool water is removed from the cooling tower and sent back to the process plant. The result, resulting hot air rises and is generally removed from the top of the tower by virtue of its low density. So this way it works. So this is hyperbolic cooling tower. You will see here fill is there outside. After that, cold water return line, cold water collecting basin at the bottom, air inlet at the inlet here at the bottom. These are the vertical ribs, different vertical ribs. This is a reinforced concrete shell, like hyperbola. And void is there, great void is there. So the typical hyperbolic profile of such tower is chosen mainly for structural and economic reasons. It is much more resistant to wind induced stresses. Why such type of structure is chosen not parabola not other type? Because it much more resistant to wind induced stress and vibration than a plain cylindrical shell and requires less material. So it is found in such a way. This way the hyperbolic or cooling towers are used. This is a comparison between natural and mechanical draft cooling tower. Height. On the basis of height, natural draft cooling tower is tall while mechanical draft is very short. On the basis of construction, is it is constructed, natural draft cooling is constructed on much on site work and it is a prefabrication possible in case of mechanical draft. Regarding noise, natural draft is very quiet while mechanical draft cooling towers are noisy. Air recirculation, there is no problem of air recirculation in natural draft cooling tower. There is a serious problem of air recirculation mechanical trap. Range of size, small size, uneconomic, but large size is large size range is there in mechanical trap. Initial cost is higher of natural draft cooling tower while it is lower in mechanical trap. Running cost is lower of natural draft cooling tower, but it is higher in mechanical draft cooling tower. So these are the points on the basis of this we can compare between natural draft and mechanical draft cooling towers. These are the references you can have the links for this for more study. Thank you very much.